done stepped in the game. And point blank range. Who done stepped in the game. And point blank range. Who done stepped in the game. Stepped in the game. Stepped in the game. How you doing? I normally don't do this, but I'm going to cut straight to the chase. Let's get the record straight. So, for those that don't know me, who don't understand me, or don't follow me, or or, or have no idea of who I am, um, I have a process. I have a, a social media presence on, on Twitter. And my process on Twitter um, involves dealing with individuals. Um, and I engage with said individuals, so my followers don't have to. So, I don't get sucked into bait. Um, my presence there is to explain the bait for what it is so others don't fall into the same line of foolishness for the most part. My channel and my Twitter presence is always nuanced for the most part. Um, I'm always looking at both sides of things, which is why the majority of my takes are going to be devil's advocate because I understand the common sense take or I understand the take that everybody else makes because they just follow who they hear or whatever or listen to, I don't know, Digital Foundry or IGN or whoever. That's going to be the default. But there's always something that's going to contrast with that. And typically speaking, I'm going to point that out if it's true. So what... <laughs> it's just just interesting because I'm just I'm just thinking now my... Uh, this, this caffeine moment... It's going to be about emulation just a little bit. So um, hopefully by this time in the next 60 days or so, my 512 gig Steam Deck will be here soon. And first thing you'll say, oh, Shadow Fox, you shouldn't have that. You should just play Switch, blah, blah, blah. I play everything. You see what's right behind me right now. That's a Series X, which is probably one of the best emulation machines you can get out there by default because you can just unlock it, um, put it in developer mode, and you can run all kinds of stuff. Several CUs on that system. Well, more than the CUs that are available on Steam Deck. And for whatever reason, mentioning that fact means that I'm downplaying it. And I don't understand. Like, you should understand the device for what it is. People understood the Switch for what it was. And the first thing they tried to do was say that it was underpowered and at the time or whatever. And it was the fastest SOC on the market in 2016. Nothing else was faster than it. So now we have... A, a Van Gogh architecture here, which is basically a, a Renor uh, CPU with a RDNA 2 GPU, and they call that Van Gogh together. That's the that's the merged architecture. We just take two different, um, you make your own APU, and that's kind of how AMD does. You can kind of pick and choose how you want to build your APU. You want to take this CPU from this processor family, and you take this GPU from this um, GPU family, and then you figure out how much memory you want, and then they put it all on one die together as SOC. And Van Gogh is the said SOC that's in Steam Deck. If you follow me on Twitter, I mentioned that a while ago. Time that was that was released, I talked about it, and I talked about the limitations on it. And I, I'll, I'll probably post it. The tweet up on here uh, for evidence of that because people think that the only thing I do is post negative stuff about it um, and not how I talk all the time about how it's going to free you from the issues that are in Windows and you're able to game in Linux, which would be awesome if games were actually developed natively for Linux and you didn't have to use Proton at all. Imagine a lockdown system for Steam only that was a Linux device and it was locked down as much as Nintendo's device is. That would be amazing because you have so much control over everything that's happening on the SOC. Instead of having to worry about, hey, well, is this running in Linux in the background? And well, this wrap, will this wrapper work? Will this driver work? And have to deal with all these configurations. You have one set configuration and Steam knows that and it's able to cater to it directly. Instead of having to deal with all these different API calls, having to do stuff like, I don't know, give unknown software root access to your system so you're able to use certain devices on there to emulate certain games just to be like Switch. I mean, those kind of things, you know, are things that you should talk about. And what I don't like is when individuals will say certain things about specifications or say certain things that are technical, and as soon as you mention it, then they say, oh, well, that's, well, that's just techno whatever. Why would you get into that? Well, I mean, you brought it up. So if you're going to bring it up, then I'm going to talk about it. So, yeah, I mean, I call this my non sif lower moment, I guess, but two things can happen at the same time, right? The Xbox Series S can be a great emulation device, just like the X is, 
And it's 20 times more capable than the Steam Deck. Does that make the Steam Deck not a good emulation device? No. But me saying that, hey, it is a Ben Series S for all intents and purposes because of what the GPU is and the CPU is, yeah, that's still true. Those two things can still happen at the same time. Both things can still be true. Especially if you're talking about a device that you hold in the palm, well, kind of the palm of your hand is really big, but it's a, it's a device that has a really big screen and you can take it around with you anywhere instead of having to lug a TV or anything like that. Um, so yeah, I, I just don't really get the confusion there. And I, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna name names or anything like that or try to, you know, drag people through the mud and all that. And I will, I will say these things though. If certain things are said that are very similar to things that I've said, I would probably tell that person they should probably correct themselves. Um, yeah, because what, what we're not going to do is talk about things that are said by me on Twitter or anywhere else and then call it a lie due to your own misreading. Um, I know I mentioned a while back talking about um, 800p on the Steam Deck, which is the native display of the device, ergo 800p, and me mentioning 800p undocked, which would mean what? It's not connected to a display, right? So why would you then say that I'm lying and say that the Steam Deck can't support higher than 800p? Of course it can. That's why it docks. I just don't... Why would I not know that fundamental thing as I reserve my system? It's just a strange... I don't know who... Maybe somebody else said that. I don't know, but... If it were about me, um, that would be quoted grossly out of context because I say everything I say for a reason. And if it's in text, it's kind of hard to double back from that. And what I would do is I would either delete the tweet or put another tweet under there with the correction, usually with the asterisk and say, hey, look, I screwed this up. This is what I meant to say. But I didn't because I specifically put undocked in front of 800 people. I mean, that's, yeah, that's that. Now, regarding emulation itself, everybody does it for the most part. Everybody's done it at some point and what have you. But what I don't understand is people's refusal to acknowledge basic facts about it. If you're doing it with a modern system, you're breaking copyright law. Straight up. And why people won't just accept that and go from there bewilders me. We come up with all these reasons talking about ethics and who's losing money and who's not. It's not about money if anybody has copyrighted a work before artwork like a video or some type of drawing or something or a book you have property rights for that that piece of media that you copyrighted right and if you copyrighted it you're going to protect that intellectual property by whatever means that are legal and if you have a legal means to protect something i.e. copy protection or anything like that, and somebody circumvents it, you have every right to pursue them if you want to. Now, nine times out of ten, would Nintendo do this? Probably not. But like I said, two things can exist at the same time. My anti sith Lord moment. So you could also be doing something that's completely illegal, breaking copyright, and whether you bought a game or not, you're circumventing, you're circumventing copy protection, so therefore you're violating the DMCA in the United States. And there's... I can go ahead and, and screenshot everything that's there, but I have yet to see anybody, when I bring that information to them, find any inf information counter to that law. When I put down that specific clause, 17, of the U.S. Code, nobody seems to have a counter to that. There's no law saying that law is wrong. And DMCA has been around how long? It's the Digital Millennium Copyright Act, so it's been around for at least 20 years. So... You would figure that we would have heard about some other law that supersedes that, but we haven't. We just keep hearing people say, if you buy a copy of the game, if you, if you, um, if you download old versions of a game, it, it doesn't matter. If the game passed, whatever, blah, blah, blah. If the game is still copyrighted and the copyright owner is still alive, is still an active entity, it's still under copyright and they can still pursue you if they want to, thereby making it illegal because it violates copyright law. But, you know, it's just it's just weird to me 
that, and these are basic things, like anybody can Google the DMCA, just Google it and read it. If we can, if we can follow digital foundries, every word and never question anything that they say, you can follow U.S. copyright law. It's very simple. It's very simple. Does everybody do it? Yes. Does that make it legal? No. There are plenty of other things that are illegal that everybody does every day. That's just one of them. And it's okay to call it that. It's fine. Because in my non sif lore moment, both things can be true at the same time. It can be illegal and everybody could do it. Just because everybody does it, doesn't make it legal. All right, that's enough about that. I'll, I'll, I'll stop talking about that. It's just, it's just a, the strange thing when, uh, you know, I hear the shaming tactic about me not having a Steam Deck and all that because it's still on the way. You know, whenever it gets here, I'll install Red Hat Linux on it and do whatever I need to do. You know, to benchmark it and do my own, um, my own white paper exam on it. Probably open it up. Maybe. I don't know. It, it's kind of, it's so vanilla. You know everything that's there. So it's kind of really no reason to open it, to be honest with you. Um, I'll definitely add my own storage to it. And I'll play around and install stuff. Probably try to play an MMO on it and, and stuff like that. So, but yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to playing games designed for Steam Deck and playing some games designed for PC. And I would love to play some Linux native games on it as well because I know those will really scream on that platform because that's what it's designed to do. So, yeah, I don't really want to deal in, in wrappers and stuff like that if I don't have to. If there's a non-Proton version, if there's a specific Linux distro of a game, I want that. Because I'm, I got a strange feeling that Steam Deck is going to run that really well. Almost as good as a dedicated platform like Nintendo has. You play games to have fun, but to impress other people.